Hello and welcome to Hey Team TV. So guys, as you can see, Fast Track 4220 is behind me. About to go and do something maybe exciting in a minute. We'll see. If you haven't yet done so, please hit that subscribe. Would appreciate it very much. Thank you to everyone that's subscribed so far. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you are also looking for us on other forms of social media, we are on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. And also, some of you started to find us. Yes, we have a page on Facebook. No, we haven't perfected it yet, but we will. But yes, we are on Facebook and we are starting to put stuff up there as well. We will get to that in a second. Oh, you've, you've turned up then. The camera's out. My cue, isn't it? <laughs> so you just come in optionally when you want to now. Do what I like, mate. The big YouTuber. <laughs> I think everything's going to his head. What are you up to? I am... What am I doing? I am just scraping out the slurry from the yard. Where the pressure washer is. And then I am going to put the turner on. Because that's on me here now. Turner on wash the turner off because it's been outside all winter which we didn't really want but it was then replace some tines and give her a good service in ready to go so you guys are going to see this day in a two-part episode i'm going to do my bit he's going to do his bit we're going to be in between each other's videos and they're going to be uploaded on two different days i'm lucky anyway let's get on with the show right guys if you haven't yet done so worked out what Adam and I are up to. Obviously he's getting the tethers on. I am getting the mowers on. Obviously I've got to shoot up and get the front one. Show you guys how to put it on. And we are gonna service up these two pieces of machinery. Obviously the coon doesn't need to be service because it's new so it should all be ready to go. Adam has already done one of the two textile tethers. He did that a few weeks ago. He's doing the second one today. So that's kind of where we are on servicing. So let's get to it. Okay first things first, snap the locking pins back. Number two, line this up, get it hitched on. Number three, re snap the lock pins back to the lock. Once Peter is on, top link. Step five, left the jacker. Step six, top link. Final step, step seven, hydronic point. Now for a few little other points, just if you can hear me. The safety chain for the PEO guard, I personally put around the towing pin on the far side, if you guys can see that, 
So that goes around that pin. Um, another thing I always tend to do, my drop pipe goes on the plus rather than the minus, because that way it the mower goes up when I pull back on the lever rather than when I push forward. And another handy tip, most of you probably do it if you're an ag anyway, my hydraulic pipe goes over the top of the top link which stops it getting caught by the BEO and getting rubbed through. But something I really do love on the Crone is the bar for replacing blades is right there. But every time I get out, I get it real quick. It's easy to get to, it's right out in the open. Okay, the front mower is on. So now, shoot back down the farm. In a minute, you'll see everything with the rear mowers on because I'm not going through the same scenario of doing all the shots of pitching up the front on back in the same video because that's just going to get monotonous. So I will do that one when I hitch up. It's when we're going to start actually cutting. Uh, a few guys, Adam and I, as will agree, we have been we are pretty overwhelmed by the amount of comments and questions and uh, the reaction to like some of the things that we're saying to all of you. Like we didn't, we never expected that. Um, yeah, it, it, it's pretty cool that we're we're learning probably as much or if not more than you guys are from us just from stuff that you guys are like sort of feeding back to us through messages um so yeah thank you very 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 much for that keep your comments coming in um even if we don't like we miss a message we have replied back to you apologies kind of doing our best um but we are pretty much usually reading everything but at the same time obviously we are working all at the same time as doing this. Um, some massive feedback on the last episode where we were hammering rolling and talking about pricing things. Don't be afraid to have a ballpark figure in your mind of what you want to be earning. Okay? It's better to have a ballpark figure and then go, right, okay, I'll leave a little bit of room in case I need a barter, but also have the balls to like, when you get to that limit of that is your baseline and someone doesn't want to pay it for you, just say no. Like, if if you aren't going to make what you're going to make or want to make, there's no point doing it. We, we've always had a, a saying like I've got from my father and grandfather, um, and unless unless we're going to beat the minimum of 100 quid we ain't going to move right and that's not quite the saying but do you know what i mean you've got to have a figure in your head don't be chasing money because that's when people have the power over you make sure you have an, your figure and stick to your guns because as uh i can't remember who wrote it you're, I can remember that it's a, I think a Bobcat skid steer in your profile photo on YouTube, off my head, got no name, but he said it out and out, someone came in, undercutted him, two years later, he's gone scat, and the customer's come back to him, right? Okay, you might have to have the pain that someone goes away for a little while, but when they start realizing either the undercutter can't do the job right because they don't have a kit. All the knowledge, yeah. It, it just all comes back to you. And then if it comes back to you, don't be don't be nice about it. Make it's business after all. Like if you if you served a good price on the work you're doing, yeah. 
next, if they come back and they've been away, it's for me, it's a look, sorry, business to business, like um, the price has gone up. Does that make sense, everyone? Um, again, if I'm ever overstepping the mark of what people think is right and wrong, let me know. But this is just the way I like to think about things because at the end of the day, uh, we work to a system that our long-term customers on anything usually get the best prices because they've stuck with us through thick and thin. Those that come and go and they're you know, in everything, whether it's buying a bale of hay, fixing a horse paddock, doing their bailing for them, head trimming for someone. If they want to go and come back and they want to play the price game, they will pay more when they come back again. If they want to stay, so you know, right, we've got that money in the bank because that customer stays with us all the time. They deserve every now and again, oh look, yeah, it's hedge from example. Oh yeah, that little head, bit of hedge I did down there, don't worry about that. You know, if it's like, took you 10, 10, 10, 15 minutes to finish off a little bit of hedge, give, give that customer, yeah, that little bit for free because they are a good customer. So if you start rewarding the customer, usually they stay around or that's what we found. But anyway, I'm digressing from mowers. I'm gonna get this hitched up and then see you in a minute. is in the background he's down there um, greasing up and swapping over tines on his tether I am gonna start by greasing up on my get the idea. I think we better speed this job up, eh? You can see here, I've now got to grease through this hole, the PEO shaft. And on this one, as you say, I made a mod modification and I make a little split in the side of the sleeve rather than having to take the whole damn thing off every time. So now to get there, if I go in here to where the blades are, I can rotate where the PTO shaft is. Eventually you'll get your grease nipple where you want it. Now on with the front mower. Okay, all greased up, backs and front. Now I am gonna start them up and run them up, if you know what that means. If you don't, running them up is start them on tick over, let the oil get back around the joints and then take it up to working speed. Right, some of you might be thinking, Justin, why did you just start the mowers up down on the flat on 
tarmac. Reason being is because not so much the front one but the back ones because they haven't been obviously moving all winter uh, the back ones especially oil I know I showed the front one but that you know better way to display it the back ones when they're up like that all, obviously all the oil falls down to the very bottom corner of the mowers inside the bed so by having them on their flat leaving them there while I grease up and stuff oil's getting to move around then on tick over just letting them go around also allowing the oil to get back around all the cogs and joints and then run them up so you go through that systematic stepping point of preparing the bed for work again rather than just going straight out in the field turning on and then realizing two cogs accidentally catch each other because they've just run dry for probably 500 rotations in a quarter of a second or something like that anyway i haven't got no know-how of inside i just know how to keep them going um but there you have it now next question i know is on the way justin you haven't changed the blades correct and i'm not going to so if you're wondering why i we're not pressed like contractors will of having to make sure everything is go 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 on day one we've got a little bit more time on our hands than that so what we do is i will go out i'll cut a field maybe a three four acre field or i will do the headland of a bigger field come back whip the blades off takes about half an hour whip the blades off switch switch into new blades but by doing it that way i get rid of all the winter corrosion rust that'll be holding those blades in so a little bit of a trick like if you guys have got your own own gear it's just a little bit of a trick to change the blades over but other than that these pair of crones are going to be going pretty soon um the easy cuts mowers crony easy cut mowers they're, they're pretty good I know I say I don't like them, okay, they don't do everything that I want to do. M mostly, I've just got to drive a little bit more. And if you're thinking that you're driving tractor anyway, Justin, it's having to lift and work mowers independently on some of our rougher ground. Um, Mikhail, uh, the Mikhail's that we used to have were pretty phenomenal at f uh, contouring and following the ground the crones will just dig in a little bit but cutting wise put my flat field brilliant um it, it's just like that slight little bit of um having to drive a little bit more you got you know those that are used to working machine all the time it's just having to drive the machine more um the front one is one that digs in more than the back two the back two to follow reasonably well they will kick in on the odd water gutter if they caught on them but that's the lie of the land that's the land we got anyway before we get bored of my face thank you very much for watching uh you will see his raw shortness in the next one on his part on the tedders hopefully if i get everything edited right um but thank you guys as ever for watching hope you've enjoyed if you haven't yet done so hit that subscribe leave a comment on anything you've seen and you can obviously find us on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, and also now Facebook. Thank you very much, guys. See you in the next one.